uh, Director of Support Student uh, Services, Student Support Services. <laughs> Hi there. So I want to talk about the um, highlight that's been going on with the community classroom, where we had a teacher, um, Tina Stavelli, who resigned. And we were so fortunate to have in our candidate search, probably the most, candidate, most qualified candidate right here already on our special education team. So Kate Kardashian will be taking over as the leader in the community classroom. And we've been spending time working on getting Kate's responsibilities covered in her present role as we transition into her new role. And that includes gathering all the staff of that community classroom, our outside related services, I'm sorry, outside contractor services and related services together so that we have a seamless transition for the students and the staff in that classroom. All right, any questions for? Shana. Great. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, from the CIA director. I just like saying that. I like saying that. <laughs> oh, here I go. It's great. Hi, everyone. Jen Staten, director of curriculum instruction assessment, CIA. A couple of things I wanted to touch base on. First of all, it's um, important for you to know that the professional learning benefit in the teacher contract is very well used. We are on track this year for the same amount as last year. And a $90,000 budget line, there was like $700 left over last year, right? So we're on the same pathway. It's a great benefit and everything they learn, they bring back and it makes our district better. So just wanted to give an update on that. Um, and then secondly, our ELA curriculum pilot. So we have two <laughs> curriculum resources we're piloting in our elementary schools. Um, all of the information about both of those curriculum materials have been sent out through our elementary newsletters. If you have a child in the classroom, you've received it from your teachers. If you haven't, I highly recommend you access those newsletters and check out those resources. We've listed every single text that's in those resources, and you can give us feedback on those. So any parent in any elementary school, I highly recommend you take the time to check those out and give us some feedback. And that's it for me. Thank you very much. Any questions for Jen? I always leave before the question. That's all right. The director of finance and operations. Yeah. So I shared a status report of our budget um, as part of the update through October. We spent about a third of our budget, so we're right on track. Uh, there's nothing in particular that's abnormal. Our revenues are coming in as anticipated, so there's not, no concerns at the moment. Um, real quickly, just to give you an update that's you know a repeat of what I gave at finance last week, the Killington Roof Project is out being bid right now. We expect um, the bids in on, I think, December 13th. The heat conversion system at the high school should be going out to bid in about two weeks and that we will have those prices back in early January. We have um, air quality uh, projects in Reading Elementary, Killington Elementary and uh, Woodstock Elementary that are still in the development stages. Uh, probably late January, early February, we'll be bidding Reading and Killington with Woodstock to follow shortly thereafter. The Killington Roof and the high school projects are both scheduled to be done before the students return in September. The other ones will probably not be done until summer of 24. And the other project that you're probably aware of, but the sewer lift station for this building has been ordered and it will be installed this summer. And that's where we are um, with finances. Uh, we'll talk about the budget when that comes up later. All right. So when you talk about the two projects, Killington, the roof, and the heating thing, yep. uh, are we putting it in the budget now as the five-year, or are we doing it as a separate We'll talk about that when we get to the budget. Okay, so then we'll stick to the conversation then. How do we expect to get it done if it's in the bond that gets, or if it gets in the budget no matter what in March 7th, and you're away for 30 days for April, to make sure that everything passes and then go out to 
award the contract to someone. We will award the contract the day after the vote is is um, a week after the vote. It's it's um right. I'm gonna make the impression we have to wait 30 days after a vote on anything because if somebody challenges the vote a majority of whatever which doesn't happen but if you will get it you, you will now it's 30 days after the vote and you will not get any funding until 30 days after the vote well the funding i'm not worried about because whether we bond it or put it in the budget okay. the funding won't be necessary until after mm -hmm. say the line, it's 30 days after okay. after any votes all right any other questions all right, thank you, Jim. The uh, the twenty four school calendar. Sure, I just wanted to present. We had a calendar for review. Um, in last year, we began coordinating calendars with all the southeast superintendents, um, making sure that we kind of align so that we're in line with the tech center and with other districts. So this is the proposed calendar for next year. Um, and it really aligns closely with what we've had in place in terms of when the fe February break um, occurs and when the April break occurs. Um, all the other dates, um, including um, this year, was the first year that we had Indigenous Peoples Day off in a very long time um, in October. Um, and we still continued with the start date, the Wednesday before Labor Day. Motion to accept the 2023-24 school year calendar as presented. I'll second that. Are there any questions on the calendar? The two hour late starts are the same amount as in the mm -hmm. previous. Mm -hmm. We haven't, those aren't in this calendar as well as the, um, they are, yeah, no, there there are. Yep. December. So it's still two hours, that's what it's, well, in terms of professional development work. Yeah, December 6th, I see you there. Yep. Call so question. All right, all those in favor of the calendar as presented? Aye. Uh, all right, I'm going to ask our students to give um, the student report. Yeah, so um, I can start. Yeah. Oh, okay, right. go for it. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, student life is great. I mean, uh, from everybody I've talked to about just basics with schedule and their classes, just the new, I think we're all like, it's what, December now, so we're all like completely kind of settled into the new schedule. I think we're all really liking it. Um, and it's definitely an improvement from last year, uh, just schedule lies and everything. And I haven't really heard a lot of negative about anything like that. Uh, maybe Owen has heard something, but uh, sports, winter sports have started up again. I think we have our first basketball and hockey and Nordic matchups uh, this week, and that'll continue on throughout the uh, winter season. Um, and recently, uh, following up with the leadership summit we had back in October, I believe, um, we created, we basically, we got this list of ideas that surrounded these four big questions. And our big overall goal was to create this student manifesto about, you know, student equality and included kind of student voice in, um, like school representation. And, uh, we have the draft of that, um, document with you know images and it's all collaborative but nicely and creatively um and the social action club has been working hard on that we recently reviewed it over did some you know final edits and we're gonna share it with advisories um soon just to give get put it out to the student body see what they think and uh hopefully our hopes are to uh finalize it um soon maybe by timeline's a little rough right now but I think we're looking at maybe the end of the month or end of mid next month. Thank you, Aiden. Yeah, I, I just piggyback off of what he was saying. Honestly, I think Student Front is uh, pretty quiet at the moment. Um, I think you'll hear from us later in the meeting too um, on a different matter. But I would say like, as far as I can think of no, uh, no glaring red flags. I think for me, I'm working on like, starting some student on student interviews to get some different feedback that we can bring to you guys um, in the coming board meeting. So that would be good for, for student life 
Um, but broadly, I think we're we're in good shape. Any questions for our students? All right, thank you, Owen and Aiden. I can't wait for your presentation later in the meeting. Okay, um, tonight we are going to be discussing the Vermont Public High School Choice and setting the incoming student limits as well as the outgoing student limits. You can see in the packet that we have a current limit of six with currently two um, tuition students or choice students coming in and we have an outgoing limit that is not limited. And currently we have two students who have enrolled in other places. Capri, would you like to speak to that? Or Garen, would you like to, I just saw Garen's here. Garen, do you wanna to speak to the impact of the choice? So Sorry, folks coming on, on a little bit uh, delayed there. So again, Sherry, as far as impacts in which way, look at the impacts on overall school budget, kind of impacts on programming, what, what's, the, what's the place, the angle we want to look at? I think both coming in and leaving. Is right. this number the board is being asked to adopt those amounts or those, do you think those are reasonable um, should be continued? Right, no, those have really, no no um, significant impacts on the student body. What we found is reports, if we had say excess of 15 or 20 students, one grade level, then it would have some real impacts, but a, a levels that we're looking at um, around six students, that seems to not have any significant impact on the student body and certainly been a, a benefit for the students who've joined us through that program. Thank you, Karen. Bob Crean, do you have a question? Yeah, just a comment. <clears throat> I've never understood this this business of limiting people who want to choose our school from another district and choice in. The the comments that have been made in past years about, well, if you have a class and there's one more kid that comes in, you got to hire another teacher and all that. It, it's never come to pass. Um, if I had my way, I'd, I'd up it to 10 or even 15. That's all. So I'm going to make a motion to accept so we can start talking about this. Um, I make a motion to accept the Vermont Public High School choice as presented by the administration. And if we get a second, then Bob can start talking. Second. There you go. There you are. You're, you're ready to go, Bob. There is Bob. <laughs> Sounds like you said we had some. Yeah. So okay. I, I, so I, a motion to amend. Is that what we're looking for? No, we're having discussion. Yeah, I think right we now. want to have discussion right now, Bob, and then okay. uh, hear from other people's thoughts on this. Very good. And then if you'd like to make an amendment, you may do that. Uh, Anna. How does this, I'd like to direct this to Ben and Mr. Penn, uh, how does this overlap or does it overlap with tuition students? Because we talk about the incoming funds. So someone can keep me honest here, but my understanding is that the incoming students don't count toward our ADM. Yeah, that, that's where I was going to go. This goes back to middle school, high school board meetings. Some, I don't know, Garen, 12 years ago, we've had these conversations. So this is a program that's set up from the state of Vermont that allows other towns that are not in our district, if the child wants to come or the student wants to come to the town school, to, to this school, and it's only middle school and high school, that the student gets to come here and you don't receive a dollar for it, that money stays with that town. So we have, and Gary can back this up, we probably now have somewhere around 10 or 12 years of um, numbers that back everything up that we're not hitting this six, um, students at all. So we've been leaving it at six for quite a while. Um, my question always comes back to Garen at this point of the conversation is when we look at any of the students of the two that are currently enrolled, do they have any siblings that would interfere with um, going above six? So that's my question to Garen. When you look at who is here currently, I do not want to outrule any siblings of those two. Aaron, do you have any thoughts on that? Looks frozen. It doesn't have Gary. 
Yeah, he does. <laughs> so, Carry yeah. clarification. <clears throat> this is the first time I've seen this issue. So these are not tuition students. Right. They, have, they already have their own schools in their own towns, but yep. the, the law allows us to accept. Right. Students. And, they, and they, their numbers, their count stays with their home school and the same uh, on the other side. So we currently have no limit. doesn't matter how many kids would leave you know, our schools to go to other towns under this program. We would still count them in our, in our numbers. So these are students coming to us from districts that do not have choice. Right, but they can choose us if they qualify. And their program. tax money stays in their town. And if our kids leave, their parents' tax money stays in our town. So, right. so, so basically, this worked into like we had a student back around ten years ago that wanted that was looking for football of a higher division ranking or whatever, and decided to go to another school um, mm -hmm. for that. Or well, we have students that want to come here because their school may not have the hockey program. So they come, I don't know if that's even true anymore because you accept anyone. There was a time about 10 years ago that the team was Woodstock players. Um, so at that time we would be able to accept someone in because they wanted to play hockey, but their school didn't have hockey. The main thing here is, is that if you do leave it to open, you may, get 30 and when we're looking at making <clears throat> other sacrifices elsewhere one may say who cares if we have to hire on another one or two teachers but let's remember what each one of those two teachers cost us to do and we're not getting any money from um, the big part of this is is that we've been using six now i think since middle school high school had its own board which is well beyond anybody on this board here because this is a unified district. Six seems to work. I think we've gotten as high as four or five. Darren's back. Darren, do you have any comments on if there are siblings that might not be allowed in if the limit is six? Uh, we haven't encountered that as a problem. Um, as I heard Jim saying that the six is a number that we, we don't usually push up against. So it seems to be a number that accommodates our needs. So we, we haven't had that. And since siblings, usually we have some history. We understand like if there's a sibling coming in the queue, that sort of thing, we can anticipate that. But uh, no, we haven't had that issue, Carrie. Any other questions, mm -hmm. comments? One more question. Is this a one-time election? So if we decide tonight, vote six, and then this summer, some family really wants to send their kids and we have to just say no, can, or can we bring it back to the board and increase it? I, I can't answer that question. Karen, do you know, because I know we annually we have to set a number. Is there an opportunity to come back to the board if there's some push? I think that's in the, in the board's preview. I think, that, you know, purview what the board decides to do, you know, as far as we're informing the state of our cap so it can be published. But if the board decided they wanted to make a later adjustment, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't be able to do that. All right, are we ready to vote? If you're opposed, please say so. Not opposed, the motion carries. Thank you. All right, at this time we have a presentation by the Woodstock Hockey High School parents. Thank you all. We've got a uh, prepared statement, I'll move too quickly. Um, thanks for the opportunity to present to the board. I'm Bob Coates, a parent of two varsity hockey players and representing all the parents of Woodstock High School girls and boys high school teams. I'm joined tonight by Tim Mello, uh, whose daughter is on the girls' varsity team, comes from a choice town, and has sent his kids to Woodstock High School because of the strong academics, but also because of the hockey programs. Jess LaPearl's here. It's Jess. She's president of the Woodstock Youth Hockey Association. Uh, I don't think Ian McCove is here. No. Um, Bruce Seeley's here and was kind enough to come uh, to the meeting to represent those founders that started Union Union back in 2001 and worked tirelessly on fundraising siting construction of the building and, and the ice facility. I asked Bruce to come tonight to provide um, uh, some insight into the original agreement between Woodstock Union High School and the Union Arena Management Company. I also note that Wendy and John Warner are here. Um, Wendy, as you know, legendary AD uh, of our school district. And uh, um, I will note that 
John Wanup is uh, one of the best left wings, uh, formerly of uh, of men's Sealy, men's and women's Sealy, <laughs> but big supporters of both Union Arena and uh, girls and boys uh, youth hockey. I hope, hope you've had time to read the brief in the board packet. Our request is for the inclusion of $15,000 in the 2023-24 athletic department school budget to help varsity hockey parents reduce the amount that they must be that must be raised next year to pay for practice and game ice. Um, those would be the game ice fees. This request would take the school district's current contribution of ice fees from zero to 42%. The current arrangement of parents raising all the fees is not sustainable is not, and, and is unworkable, and even in the shorter term, threatens the future of varsity, of the varsity programs. ICE fees this year are $35,600. And I'll note that um, Union Arena has kept that rate flat for five years, but over 20 years, that number has um, escalated over time. As we noted in the brief, no parents of varsity sports played on school grounds have to pay for the maintenance and upkeep, upkeep of their playing fields. Soccer, field hockey, football, softball, baseball, lacrosse, and basketball all play on courts and fields financially supported by the high school and the school district budget. Uh, we're the only school district whose budget does not include some portion of the cost of the ICE fees. 11 schools, um, this was Tim Mallow doing some research and calling the 80s around the state, 11 schools in our division uh, two pay 100% of the fees. They support the fees. Radical parents and booster club uh, fundraise for half the cost of their fees, and the school district pays, budget pays for the other half, which Suck High School does not contribute. A new uh, varsity hockey boosters club, along with Woodstock Youth Hockey Association, is committed to continue to fundraise, as we have always done. But we need the school's partnership to ensure varsity hockey remains sustainable into the future. The varsity hockey program continues to attract players from choice towns over the last 20 years since the building of Union Arena students from have come to Woodstock to play hockey. They brought their tuition dollars with them. As many of us know, a good hockey town attracts parents, families, home buyers, and taxpayers. There's been a question that's lingered about whether the school district was permitted to purchase ICE fees with school and taxpayers, taxpayer funds. Bruce Seeley, who was, was instrumental in the creation of Union Arena and involved in the original agreement, document can attest to the provision that expressly allows the exception of taxpayer support for the purchase of ICE fees. The exact language is with the exception of normal rank user fees, which may be charged. The varsity, varsity hockey program the programs are championship programs, both girls and boys. A strong varsity program is what we hockey parents hope for when we're bringing future hockey players up through the Woodstock youth hockey youth programs. There are hundreds of kids, parents, grandparents involved in Woodstock ice hockey programs. Hockey like football, baseball, lacrosse, field hockey, and the other varsity sports, girls and boy, boys sports, contribute to the health and well-being of our school communities. We need your partnership to make the varsity hockey program sustainable and continue to build on its championship legacy. A legacy noted in an email to Tim Mello from Robin Tindell, who came of age before there was a girls team, and she writes, don't know if my voice is less meaningful because I am a Heartland resident and therefore don't have a board rep. Not that it makes my voice more meaningful, but I was the first female hockey player at Woodstock before there was a team. And my dad and my sister started the first Woodstock girls team after I left college. I'm so happy, happy that it, come, it has come this far. It was my dream to play with girls instead of boys, um, with my friends and classmates from Woodstock. It never happened for me, but I'm happy that it is such an opportunity for this generation. 33 years after, I would have joined the team if it had existed. So I'm very appreciative um, of consideration by the board. We have been to the Finance Committee to make this formal proposal. We think it's a reasonable proposal. We're, it's not that uh, Woodstock Youth Hockey or this new booster club is walking away from leveraging private funds and fundraising, but we need a partner with the school district and we'd like to bring, we'd be happy to come up to 50% like Brattleboro, but we've picked a number that we think uh, makes our fundraising sustainable. Rather than having to raise the entire amount, we would raise 42% of the amount needed to pay for the ice fees, both practice and games. Okay, um, just as we get started on discussion, I'd just like to remind us all that we've asked that each board member choose to speak twice and limit their talking time and that you be recognized by the chair to keep it orally because the, I, it's hard to monitor the whole space here. 
So Ben. Yeah, just to point out the budget process, uh, you'll see in the finance presentation here that um, tonight we're going to give an update on the budget. And then in two weeks, there's a special session to um, hopefully finalize the budget. That's really going to depend on whether we have our final enrollment numbers from the Agency of Education. That's always kind of the last thing that comes in. But that's what we use to, you know, really right size the budget. So um, I think this is a great opportunity while everyone's here to ask questions, get more information kind of in support of that process. And I yield the floor to those who have uh, things to say. All right. Uh, Todd? Yeah, hi, thank you. Um, that was the most professional hockey presentation that I felt we received today, and I, I really appreciate that insight. I'd be curious to know from the board finance what we pay on average for all the other sports for their equipment and uh, field and utilities for the field and, you know, whatever the cost might be for football, let's say, or, or the track or soccer, it, it'd be good to have that data to put that against what hockey may or may not be receiving, uh, just so we have a sort of baseline. Thank you. Uh, so Jim's read for you the numbers he can present to you. I can give you a, a dollar amount for the maintenance on the fields here at the high school, um, which been probably about 25 to 26,000 a year. That includes the basketball court and the eight fields here at Woodstock High. That's fertilization. It doesn't include necessarily uh, salaries of my grounds folks, but that's what we put into the fields. And how many sports does that cover? Eight fields and the one court. So, so that covers baseball, softball, soccer, field hockey, football, what have I missed? Cross, cross. Cross. Track and field. Track and field. And keep in mind soccer is boys and girls. So there's it's a eight or ten sports. Um, we do have two staff members that are dedicated to the fields. Uh, one of the things, as far as equipment, the we we spend the most expensive um, program. We spend about forty five hundred dollars a year on equipment, and most of them are under a thousand dollars on equipment. Um, keep in mind also that if you're a skiing parent, you will have to pay not only for the equipment, buy the equipment for your student, but also the passes for the, the mountains where you, you ski and race. Uh, mountain biking, which is still a club sport, um, the students on the equipment, mom and dad transport the students to and from every event, and they have to pay their own trail fees. So we, we have some imbalances uh, between a lot of our sports. Um, and that's what we brought to policy, some consideration around how we make those decisions. I, I would say the, the ice is clearly the most expensive, but we do have that imbalance in a lot of our sports. Jim? Yeah, so I just have some clarification here with the, the letter that, um, or the email that we received. It, it ends in end. What, what's after end? That's all. I mean, for the longest time, this is one of my questions that came up. I play in hockey every year, okay? And I've been told all along that it was a club sport in the beginning, and it was not to. You've written up something well here that says, but then it says end, and it stops. What's after end, A and B? I don't know if you know it. Well, I, I mean, if I'm gonna get a document, I would like to know what the complete document says. Uh, currently, it says that it can, whatever, end, and what? What what email is being referred to? Because yeah. I didn't receive we received, an email. We received something to get or yesterday or whatever from um Robert and Sherry. Maybe I don't know, maybe I'm the no, it's a Robert it was Sherry Caesar, Robert Coates, Ben Ford, Perry Bristow, we have. I'm on Billings and Rounds, but it basically says that um <clears throat> Oh, we don't Where is it? Is the intent that the arena shall be indefinitely managed and operated for the benefit of WHS students at no cost to WHS taxpayers, with the exception of normal rink user fees, which may be charged, and then A and D apostrophe. I would just like to know what the rest of it says. That's all. Right. 
Um, just before Jim leaves, Jim Fenn. Um, so, could we get something more along the lines of like dollar per athlete? Because that explanation to me didn't help me make a decision. I, I can't give you that. Okay. Um, I don't have the time to generate that for you right now. Well, um, 26,000 divided by the number of students participating in field sports, something. Yeah, like I don't know the number. Um, we also have two full time staff. You want to include that in the number? I mean, right. it should Who be out there the grounds at this facility. So I just like to bring the point here that, you know, I'm usually the one that's called for not following Robert's rules. <laughs> And we're only supposed to get two. And I thought I had a floor for my first one. I don't want to get, and I, I agree with your questioning, Matt. I just don't want to lose my first spot here that I had a question. <laughs> That's all. Because and Jim, Robert's rules were put in place for people like me, I guess. <laughs> so I'm asking what is N, and Ben is showing me it's just a bunch of whereas, whereas. I, I would like to see that rest of the document doesn't have to be today. I need clarification from Jim Fenn. I said I had two things for clarification from Jim and from Ben is that I recall doing budgets that we're here for the next couple of weeks, as you had said, to include things into the budget. It doesn't necessarily mean that if we say we're going to include it now, it comes down to a couple of weeks from now, as we get the rest of the information, because we're going to be finding out our final numbers. So, if that if, is that correct in your thinking, that if I make a motion that we accept to put in the current budget working for this amount while we work through, we can always have this discussion later when it comes down. No, we can have further discussion if, later. If you want to put a number, a whatever number. number you choose into the budget for to support hockey ice time. Um, that's your prerogative. But, and but to be clear that all the numbers that are in front of us now are not in stone until we vote it. They're, they're, they're cast pretty hard, but it hasn't set yet. Yes, it's not set. Correct. So you don't set it until you set it. Right. Okay. All right, um, I'm going to recognize Bob, Crean, then Todd. Oh, oh, and then Matt. I just will finish by saying, I think we could come up with the cost per athlete to maintain the fields when we burden it with the cost of the staff and then compare it to the cost per athlete for hockey and just get a sense of where that comes out. And then it doesn't, if it, um, change like the rationale is a good reason maybe to support this but i still like to see is it a huge disparity is it close i mean what what and, does it look like and what the conversation has to include what sort of use of the fields get for phys ed and how do you factor that in um it's it's a larger conversation than just we have 150 ad, um, athletes to use the field so you divide that you know the cost by that because the fields are used for fourth of july the fields are used for is that all, all, all spring and all fall? Um, the fields are used for a lot of other things, community as well. As and so, um, is it fair to put that whole burden on the athletic program? I don't think so, but I think we trust you to come up with a factor. I'm asking you to not trust me. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and to please, um, if you want to go down that path, Let's actually get on that path, not in two weeks, but take the time to do it right. I think that's where I was leading to. There's questions, and I don't mind saying yeah. we're going I, to look to I, I, I think if you want to do something for hockey, do something for hockey for a year, and then go down that path and come back with a, a better answer for a long-term solution. I'm not giving up the second one to get other people. Okay, that. we've got Bob Cree. Yeah, I think uh, more information is always valuable, but to to not do anything now until more information comes is not a good idea. I like Jim's idea of of putting something in there in the budget um, right now 
And I think Bob's proposal of 42% is, is, uh, is a good place to start. And let's see what happens when we take a deeper look at uh, the cost of the other sports. I think this is a no brainer. I think this, this would enhance uh, Woodstock High School's reputation. I think we should do it either 42 or 50%. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Todd? I'm not in favor of necessarily voting yes for the funds without more information because you don't want to sort of skew it one way or another. The union arena is such a complicated thing. And also those the union arena makes revenue at other times from other aspects and avenues that the fields do not, whereas the taxpayers are burdened with the entire cost of those fields. But I would say I agree with Bob and Jim, and I'm in favor of also putting in uh, to be reviewed line item to be slugged um, for budget consideration because it's something I'd like to have happen. I just would need to see more information. Um, so I, I'm also in favor of that. Well, thank you. Anybody else? Sam? Um, I just think it's also important while we are looking at these numbers and making these considerations that you can't completely be like, okay, well, we have to make this completely equitable because all sports are not completely equitable. Like hockey costs more just as a sport, you know, and that needs to be part of the consideration that it costs more than say soccer and other things. So you can't say, well, soccer only costs, like all these things only cost this much and then we're spending this much, well, because it's a sport that it costs more. So you can't really use that as terms to look at things. That being said, I think getting more information, it's always good, love it. And that, you know, um, what Bob said about, you know, putting in light on them to review for next year, but that this will only increase our school's reputation. Yes, Lara? Yeah, piggybacking on what Sam was saying, that not all sports cost the same amount. I guess the information that I would like to see is, are there other sports teams who also think that they should be getting more? Like, I don't mind paying less for a soccer player than for a hockey player, as long as the soccer player's needs are getting met. So are there other sports needs that aren't getting met that we need to consider more of? Ben? Well, I think we can anticipate that, you know, others will come, right? We just rattled off a few other programs, downhill skiing, yeah. mountain biking. Heck, I don't know, do we have an equestrian club? That sounds pretty expensive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, others may may follow, right? I mean, we have to be kind of careful about uh, what kind of precedent we set. That said, uh, my view is that, um, you know, seeing that there are parents in attendance who are influenced by the availability of a hockey program to enroll here. I mean, you think about what we charge for tuition, um, you know, how much uh, equalized pupil means to our um, our finances. I mean, you're in the ballpark of about $20,000 per kid. So an ask of 15,000, you know, see if it's if it can make a meaningful difference in someone's decision to come here, then it seems like something that could be considered an investment. Jim, would you like to make a motion? I'm going to make my second talk. <laughs> okay. I get two. I was thinking you were ready to make a motion. Yeah, I, He's I, counting. He's yeah. going to count the whole time. No, I, where, where I'm going with this is the first question I've had for years was answered. So thank you. I've never seen the original document. Um, I'm going to come back to you. Um, we live in the day of fair and equitable or whatever. And I'm going to piggyback off of what Ben had just said. Um, I'm in countdown. I've got two more months after this and I'm done with the school board after 12 years. But um, <laughs> I think you're setting yourself up for, you know, the ski teams and everyone else will be coming. And if you're going to set a dollar amount, then it should be something, Jim, then that should be looked at for all other that are not. I don't think it's fair that we now take something that may have been a club sport in the beginning or for some reason was overlooked or whatever. But, you know, you're going to get, there's a lot of, children, students, I'm sorry, Anna, students that um, would probably love to be on the ski team, but the families cannot afford also at that time. So um, I'll make a motion that we um, have the finance team work um, something of the sort of additional funding for 
all the sports to be um, looked at. Merci. Yes, uh, I will second the motion, but maybe add on to it, you know, in, you know, in, like with working with the policy committee, because it's on our list of things to do to talk about exactly this and putting together a policy related to this. And so um, I think, you know, it's, can't make a policy with a number, so we'll have to do it. Right. together. So I'm going to change my motion yeah. to allow this to go back to finance and policy for all the sports to come back to see if a number can be worked out within the budget. I second or third whatever version that is. Yeah. And just a discussion point before you know we vote, I would say that you know uh you know if we pass if we agree to pass this, you know, uh, 15,000, um, we may just understood that this is like for this year while we work on a policy that will um, address exactly this for future years and other sports as well. I'll call the questions. Does someone else have any hand raised? Jim, is your policy, is your motion including a, a, a number? I'm leaving it up to finance and them to come back to us. I think Matt had some questions that we're leading to. Well, I'm just curious, is this motion to have yeah. the finance committee do some calculations and have the policy committee review the equity of all sports? Is that preventing us from then voting tonight to yeah. honor this request? By the... something that's going to come very quickly. What I said in the beginning was the honor that they have to understand that we can't honor their request. We have to put it forward to work it into the budget because we don't have. So in two weeks or when do you expect to have us? January, two weeks. And then we're, we're scheduled to meet again to finalize the budget. To finalize the budget. So that's when we should have all the numbers from Jim, some of the questions you were asking, some of the questions but, we're going to yeah, Two weeks is not when it's going to finally be uh, discussed at policy committee or worked out. That, that is something we put on our agenda to. It's going to be working on this early. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure finance is going to be working on it as soon as possible with Jim Fenn leading the mm -hmm. charge. Policy, I think I heard Sam say, please understand that, you know, we work on a number of areas, but then it's going to take them the rest of this year or going into the next school year to come up with the policy. Yeah. Is that what I heard you say, yeah. Sam? Yeah, it's not. So policy it's, is not correct. Right. Right. Policy yeah. is not, not going to be turned around. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'd say similar for finance. We could certainly, you know, solve for this request for hockey, you know, in two weeks. But in terms of looking at the budgets of, you know, all these factors that Jim was talking about, the complexity, that'd be tough without another meeting before the board meets again. Yeah. I mean, all I was trying to say is like we need to do this these things, and that that should okay. be the the order that we do them. But not no, we should it be be doing these things, and it that we not for this year. So this so for, since, so for since I made the first motion yeah. and then you second, but yeah. then you wanted me to change, then I made a second motion. Todd really couldn't because you had to accept it. I will change my motion for a <laughs> second or third time to say that. We include the fifteen thousand dollars into this budget for finance to work in if it works or not. That's my motion on this one. I'll second that one. Okay. Thank Todd. you, Jim. Todd. Yeah, sorry. Just is there like a corporate sponsorship where like your logo can get on the uniforms or anything like that? Like, you know, people might be interested in something like that too. Just throwing that out there. I think that's where they're probably looking to get their other 40, 58%. Okay. okay. All right. Are we ready to vote? All those who are opposed to the motion, please say so. All right. The motion passed. To keep in the spirit of it, please let's do look at the other sports. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much Thank you. for your presentation. Oh, yeah. 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 Great. Um, maybe <laughs> <finance>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Um, am, I, am I a presenter? Yeah. <laughs> Host disabled participant screen sharing. Good to see you, Bob. Good to see you. Marina, do you, can you, I don't see, I have the capacity to make them. Again, yeah. <laughs> well, I can do it uh, verbally, yeah. but yeah. she's there. Okay. Your administration is a I'm great here, job. Ben. I shared it with you. You shared it? Okay, I shared great. it with you. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. Everybody prepare to see my email. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let me start with kind of where we are in the budget process timeline. I'll make this bigger so everybody can see it um, at home. Everybody see that? Okay, so the December and January dates, we collapsed a little bit this year. We've got our, poly or our committee meetings in two weeks, and our hope is that uh, the numbers that we have from the AOE on enrollment are, are pretty good right now, are, are pretty close, and then we'll be able to confirm those in the next couple of weeks. If not, you know, we'd have to have a, a special meeting probably before the January in order to uh, get a vote on the final budget. Substantively on the budget, let me fast forward to kind of the, the key factors and assumptions that we've been tracking. Um, the pupils we know, um, uh, Adam made a motion to add an executive session tonight uh, for number five, this increase in staff pay, excuse me, uh, on the support staff. So we should get a little insight there in our executive session. Um, penalty phase is still suspended for this year. The big piece of news that I have to share with the board tonight is the yield number. Each year, the, there's a forecast that comes out from the Department of Taxes as to what that yield is, and it happens on the same date every year. It's on December 1st, and we have the December the uh, tax commissioner's December 1st letter, and I will share it with everyone. Let's see if I can make this easier. Uh, let's see. So um, the key number, as we scroll down here, is a very large yield number, 15,479. Um, that probably doesn't mean anything out of context. So let me pull up our what-if scenarios that we've been looking at for the last few weeks. We had been projecting a yield number based on, on last year's number in the 13,000 range of 14,239. And this yield number um, does very good things for our budget. Um, at that, let's see, let me see, at that larger number, we were previously forecasting a, on the 14,231, an increase on the equalized rate of around four cents, which was heroic based on the work that our administration did. And uh, at this new yield number, um, what we're looking at is a, let me see. There we go. Um, we're actually looking at um, an impact to the tax rate of, uh, let's see, what's that showing? That's only showing 13 cents to the good. Um, it's, it's uh, hang on, is it eight? Yeah, 13 cents to the good. That's what that would do. No, hang on, do I have this right? Controls. There it is. Sorry. Oh, yeah, we've got some, some additional factors in this. It's, um, what do we say, Jim? 8.6 cents? 8 point something cents. Yeah, 8.6 cents uh, as a reduction in taxes. But this kind of presents us with, kind of coming out of our finance committee meeting, this presents us with some kind of interesting decisions to make because the, the other piece of business that we took up at finance was talking about um, three bond warrants that we were going to go to the, the taxpayers to uh, to bond now those three things are the roof at Killington's a couple you know nearly two million dollars that we're budgeting converting the middle school and high school to uh, hydronics from steam and then uh, 2.7 million dollars in you know finalized design work for the new build project um, this number that I have highlighted on the screen here is the amount that we're um, you know under the uh, if, that we could spend up to uh, the uh, to, to keep tax rates even, if we went to the taxpayer and said, we're going to hold tax rates flat, but we have some projects that we'd like to do, then in next year's budget, we could be looking at almost $1.2 million worth of available funding, right? And if you did that over the next, you know, I don't know what the yields are going to do over the next few years, nobody has a crystal ball, but the last few years, they've been very healthy. 
we could be looking at funding those projects. Um, if you do it on a five year time frame, my good friend and associate on the board, Jim Half, informs me you don't have to go to your taxpayers for that. Well, you do go to your taxpayers, you go through the budget. Right. You, you don't you do a budget approval, but not bond approval. Right. right. Yeah. So that um, that's actually the next item on the agenda this evening um, in, in terms of uh, the finance committee updates was coming out of our finance committee meeting. We had unanimously approved as a committee that the board approve uh, these bond warrant articles for town meeting day in, in March. Um, but then getting this news on Thursday about the yield uh, kind of obviates the need to go to the taxpayer. Um, at least, you know, that's that's. In the opinion of, of the chair and in, in discussion with our, our finance director, we're in a very healthy financial situation with regard to those projects. But I would open it up for, for comments, Jim. I'd certainly appreciate any insights you've got. You made a good suggestion at finance to potentially you know, keep yeah. those. So exactly. Jim Fenn sent me the number the other day, and then I did calculations. I came out with 1.4312 instead of the 1.5, whatever. Um, I think we should keep at some kind of level. Um, my, my major concern, let's say we move all, we have three bond votes in front of us now. I had asked at that time, the two that were going to be five years, you did not have to go, you put it in your bond, you put it in your budget and the voters vote on it at the annual vote, okay? You don't need a bond vote on those two. The one that concerns me is the um, the new build um, engineering, which I believe you're being asked by your architect for DDs instead of schematic drawings, because all you need for a bond vote for the full is a schematic drawing type thing that's going to get you your square footage to set up in the rooms and then the cost per square footage at the time, enough for you to go to the voters for a vote for the bond. To spend $2.7 million on a full blown out um, design, um, I, 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 I've never seen anyone, and I've had this discussion with you in the parking lot, I've never seen anyone go that far. Um, I believe you have enough information right now to work off of that 70 or 75 million to put to the taxpayers if you decided to do it this year or if you decided to wait to do next year. I think the district where we're looking to make these cuts prior to this number coming in you know, to take $2.7 million, if you do not, if you already have enough information for a bond vote, then why don't you find out where the taxpayers are? Instead of spending $2.7 million to find out that, and, and I don't think you really do, to me, Jim, this is like a, I call them DVDs, it's, it's the final. And you don't know if you're there yet because you're still going to have to, play with some of the Act 250 step back and everything. It's not finalized as I recall when we went through, when we were going through this process with, mm -hmm. with Lee Sherwood. Is everything's not exactly yet. So I don't know why we're looking to spend $2.7 million to design a building where we think it can go now. And, and this was one of the issues. I mean, mm -hmm. folks may think I'm against a new build. I am not. I would love to have a new building here. I just want it to be done right and to the voters right. Lee Sherwood had a building that was not able to be built in a spot until you finally listed. And I was like, what about your setbacks on the river? What about your setbacks on your streams? What about your flood? The building got moved because they finally looked at it. Um, we have as a board enough number and maybe add in a 5% contingency for another year or whatever to go to the voters and sell this. Now, maybe since I'm saying this in you know, December, we have to wait another year because you're not going to sell it between now and March. 
Yeah, that's the, the thinking. Um, I, maybe just to kind of bring this in front of uh, the board for some kind of decision, it sounds like the, the 1.2 for the, um, I, I've got this on the screen here, right? The, the Killington roof and the middle school, high school improvements seem like those are items that we could all agree could go in the budget. I don't know if anybody's got a very developed opinion on this, but this kind of windfall we see with the yield, that makes sense. What I'm hearing from Jim is that we need to take the temperature of our voters on the, on the, um, you know, the getting the shovel ready on the project. The, the way we set it up, you might remember from the last board meeting was that in March of 23, we go with this kind of set of bonds to the taxpayers. And then in March of 24, you know, take that year to fundraise and to get the word out and to do these kind of community meetings. Um, I guess just from what you're saying, Jim, it makes sense to me that we should take the temperature of our voters and do some, we were planning to do it anyway. So in terms of a recommendation of the chair, um, even though the committee has voted <laughs> unanimously to, to authorize all these, I would suggest that we um, uh, roll these first two uh, uh, costs into the, the budget as projects and go to bond with the, with the final one, uh, according to our prior plan. So you're talking 2.9 mil. Okay, 1.2 and 1.75. Mm -hmm. So $585,000 a year with no interest. No, you still have to borrow the money if you want to do the said, project. No, I'm saying without interest. So you have to add in the interest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So at what about 3.6, 3.7? Call for now. Call for for now. So you're about what, 630 a year? Yeah, just over six. Okay, so call it six thirty. Every hundred thousand is a penny for the tax rate. So you're adding six point three cents to the one point four three. You still have that. You're, you're right about that you're dollar. Still rate. within a penny or two of the current of the dollar equalized tax rate. Yes. Yeah. So I would like to see us move those two into the budget. And um, yeah, it makes sense. I think Todd has his hand up. Todd. Yeah, um, for my two minutes, I'll just yell at me when it's time. People have worked so hard on the school bills and the finance committee and budgets, and I see such professionalism. I, I really do. So don't get mad at me. I'm just riffing here. I make movies and TV shows, but I do make them well and have made a good living. You are 20 seconds. Structure, the yeah. infrastructure <laughs> projects. The infrastructure projects, for sure. The town, we've already saved money by having a great budget, great people working on it. You can afford them. Why put them to the voters? You can already pay for them. I'm fully in agreement. The $2.7 million, I disagree on because I agree we need to have the temperature of the voters, but I still don't know why we can't go to the voters and say, give us $70 million or an attempt to go and ask for $70 million, and we're going to come back for another vote for the final approval. What if 51% of the voters say we're willing to go and bond $70 million? And then it's the great work of all the people in finance and budgeting to try to get those contractors to get it done. I just came from my school, $55 million for a gym. These things are only getting more expensive and you never know if they're going to say yes. So I know it's more complicated than that. I know I don't have all the information, but I said it the day I met Sherry, when I came on the school board, we should put this to a vote. The sooner someone says we can spend this money, and borrow it, the better. And then it's up to the good, hardworking people of the board who already have shown they're sustainable and 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 budget friendly and and not off the rails here. I mean, we argue about ten thousand dollars all day and night. Of course, we're going to argue about seventy million or sixty million. But every year we wait, it's going to be another ten, another twelve, another fifteen million. Everyone knows that. So I feel like we just owe it to the voters to ask them if they're interested in it or not. Get a percentage on the vote, and if that percentage happens to be 51% or greater, then we're in a great position. So that's just my thought on it. I know it comes from a place of ignorance, but I, ju I just really wish we just asked the folks for the money now. So, yeah. Carrie, Todd? Carrie? Yes. Just so we can keep them separate, I'm going to make a motion that we put the roof and the heating system into the current proposed budget mm -hmm. for 23 24. If I can get a second on I'll that. Second. That. second. Okay, and then you can call. Okay, I'm going to call that. The question if you are. Well, you got nine. Just some, discussion, some discussion on that. So, you guys are moving very quickly trying to keep up. So, the property yield change in itself 
completely freed up the 2.9 million that we need to do those two projects. It's about 630,000 a year. You freed up about one fifth of that. So we'll pay for it over five years. We'll get a local loan and pay for it versus going to a bond. So the state of Vermont um, statute states that if a board, school, town, city, whatever, working on their budget can work a project into five years or less, it does not have to be a separate bond article. You can work it into your budget. So what we're doing here is that we had a number at the last meeting of a dollar 51 and change. And now with the new number that the state has given us, it brings it down to 1.4312. So what these two articles now going into the bond is going to add about six and a half cents to that 1.3. So we're right around 1.5. So we're still a penny less than what we were two weeks ago. Yeah, that's right. There's the there's the amount that's freed up, Matt, on the screen there is the uh, uh, 8.4 cents. And then I guess in terms of, of do um, dollars on the budget, Jim just gave that figure somewhere around 600K um, a year that you know, you'd have to pay out of the budget. And then our current year budget that we all had before our CLA that we're paying now is what, 1.5125 or is it? Yeah, it's right here, one point. So we're so we're so we're adding in these two items plus a bunch of other things that is keeping with a zero percent really increase. Yeah, I'm the equalized. The CLA yeah. is going to come in. Well, CLA it. is never. You know me with CLA. Yeah. Do not vote on a budget. Any board member that's here, forget about the CLA. <laughs> Just forget it. Sherry. So the other part of the consideration that Jim Fem and I have had a conversation about is remembering the legislation that goes in effect next year, that any budget increase over 5% will be reviewed by AOE. So the tax rate increase over right. 5% will be reviewed by AOE. So it's, we really need to be strategic and thoughtful about what our total budget is this year, as we anticipate what the changes will be based on legislation next year. And those have been part of our Jim Thames and my conversation. There are a lot of variables that we have to consider and, 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 and so really want to be thoughtful for our taxpayers, but the same plan long-term as opposed to short-term. And, and this is where I'll blow away with Robert's rules or whatever. By, by following what Sherry had just said was, is that if you have it down at the 1.43 or whatever, um, you know, you're better off having the 1.5 now going into. So um, I think you... Because then next year you can go another five percent from there. Mm -hmm. You're not going to. This is just strategic planning of working with the budget. Uh, so um, the, I guess the, the second part of the um, kind of suggestion as we were ruminating here was on the. Wait, are we still uh, an open motion? No, we have an open motion. Okay, sorry. Got so was that your questions it, answered? Yeah. So is it? I mean, it's. We're not going to do a long-term bond financing. We're going to do a short-term loan and pass it in the budget. And we're still going to keep the spending and where we sort of thought it was before the property bill came in. Yeah, and also to where it is this year. Yeah, better than, yeah, still save about yeah. four cents off of what you had. You don't need a loan for the, uh, for the blueprints for the- well, That's, a, that's another that's discussion. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not talking about it. looks like Todd has- his... Todd, do you have your hand up again? No. Okay. Um, all right, uh, if we can take a vote on uh, financing the two bonds within the budget over the next five years. Um, if you are opposed to that motion, please say so. I'd like to say thank you. Uh, thank you very much. It sounds like a unanimous vote for that and certainly seems like a reasonable way to go forward. No, I guess on the what's left here then is the is the blueprints and and I guess if I could address your um, points you've made, Todd. Um, I guess the the idea from from I'm speaking with the new bill hat here is to be able to go to the voters and say that you know this this project is ready, right? Is to to say we've like another year before you go to the voters 
because we we have taken the temperature of a lot of different communities and heard a lot of kind of feedback and frankly pushback and seen a lot of these boats fail around the state. So the strategy is really to be able to say, okay, we raised X amount of dollars and based on the um, presentation we gave at the last board meeting, that's 5 million by the time we go to the voters to subsidize those early year tax impacts. That's really kind of a, a go no go decision for us, right? To be able to say, have we raised the 5 million or not? So that's that's an indicator, right, of, of kind of donor support for the project. Um, and then the, the second thing is be able to get the architect going with this money this year because they need about a year to get the project shovel ready. So if we can say to the voters, shovel ready, the earlier you know impacts are, are subsidized by fundraising, please can we have your vote? Because you're not going to have it this good ever again, right? Is the is the idea. Anyway. Um, Jim. <clears throat> I guess it is a new topic. It is a new topic. <laughs> That's why I slid it up. Sam saw the timing. Yeah. Um, I just believe that I agree with Ben and I agree with Todd. You need to go to the voters. I'm saying to Ben's point here is that I don't think it's enough time for new build to get this out by March. You can always have a special vote if you think you're ready. June, July, or August. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want to get some of your financing. And believe me, I would really love to see a new building here. I just want to do this right. Okay. Um, so my main concern is, is that this $2.7 million, I think, is not needed at this time because you don't need to get to that DD part yet because you don't have all the information. Now, the 2.7 million is going to be financed over how long? Is it 10 years? The law only allows designed to be financed for five. Okay, so call it $3 million after your interest or whatever. Okay, five years. So what are we at? $600,000. <clears throat> so now what everyone has to remember here is that we just got to a penny less. So when we say our tax rate is X, $1.50, or just under $1.51. That's what's in the budget. Any articles of bonds after the fact, if approved, then gets added onto the tax rate. So this would be another six and a half cents because each penny raises about $100,000. Um, I just think, and I'm agreeing with Todd in that. And I'm saying, no, we have enough information to go to a vote. It's just when is new bill comfortable going to a vote? And it's not going to be shovel ready because you don't have Act 250, all the permits together. You don't know the exact placement, you, but you're looking for funds that's going to draw up a design that's final and it's not going to be. That's my two minutes. Todd? Yeah, thank you. Um, that's uh, this is good. Good discussion. Um, again, all I know is one thing. Warner Brothers asked me how much a comedy is. I said, how many actors? Where are we filming it? They said, doesn't matter how much is it. I say it's thirty million dollars. It's great. It's thirty million. Every comedy is thirty million dollars. Okay, it's really fifty then tax credits. Okay, it's thirty million dollars. Can we go and ask for the two point seven million, but also? ask for the 70 million and say, hey, here's the options voters. We really need 70 million. It'll be cheaper if we authorize it now and we probably won't start building it for two years, but that'll get us the 2.7 million to get started on these architectural plans and this and that. It'll also be able to lock in some other aspects which could go and create more value for the dollar for the taxpayer savings. Um, and then we go and say, or do you just want this? And if they vote for neither, then it's a nothing, right? And we're in an even more precarious spot. I, I just, again, I know it's 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 uncouth to think that you should ask people for money when you don't know where it's all going. Um, but that's all I do every day. So with that, I leave it in better hands and we'll stay silent on the matter. <laughs> so the 2.7 million, to, to my clarity, is that intended to have a person who's going to take charge of the, the permits, the 250, all of those things that make the building ready? Is that what the cost is including? I'm trying to remember, Jim, do you remember the breakdown? Mm -hmm. Jim, you're muted. 
the, the two point the two point seven million dollars is going to cover getting the plan to at least eighty five percent build ready. And from there, you will be able to actually go out and do a real bid with a construction manager. So you will have solid numbers that you can take to the bank. Um, I respectfully don't agree with Jim half that we have enough information at this point because we do have conceptual, we do have a lot of stuff, but we don't have something that I can hand to a builder and say, please give me a price. Um, it will include the engineering so we can address the Act 250 setbacks and all of that. It will bring on staff on a contingent basis, a construction manager so that in March of 24, if a bond passes, you can break ground as soon as the cross is out of it because you'll have construction manager on ready to go. And we will also be able to bring on an owner's rep to be the spokesperson between you, your leadership, and the contractor and the construction manager to make sure that our interests are being represented. So it's it's a lot of work. It's a year's worth of work, um, but it gets you to something that you can get a firm number where right now, anything we get is a soft number. And um, we can certainly get a soft number based on what we have, but we can get a guaranteed max. We can get all the things we need so we can go to the bank and say, this is what it's going to cost us, not a penny more. And that's the difference between what we have now and what we would have a year from now. Um, it will give us a litmus test on what the community thinks. Um, if they pass this resoundingly, there's a good chance they'll pass the new bill. If this fails, New new bill won't go anywhere, and if it's really close, we've got some work to do. Any other questions? I, I have oh, go ahead, comments. Matt. So go I'm ahead. not in Hollywood, but I do get a living build uh, power plants, and so we go through this process of getting permits, designs, getting construction bids, and I think Carrie just raised a really important point. If the 2.7 million doesn't include the permitting. We could end up in a situation where you get the greatest designs in the world that you can hand to a builder, but if you don't have the permit, um, you, that money could just be wasted. I mean, we could truly have to move the, the building and, and sort of or some of it could be wasted. So the, in the development business, when we build big capital projects, we secure the land, we start working on the permits, and we get those permits like in hand before we would authorize what to me is a, a very much a capital expense. So 2.7 million is no longer just like your development at risk dollars. It's the it's starting to sound and look like capital expenditure when it's 2.7 million on a project that only is expected to cost 75 million. So I, I didn't know that it didn't include the permitting. Could and, and, and there was an oversight. It does include the permitting. I just totally okay. forgot about it. And we've taken the permitting as far as we can. You know, based on this has been you know five years in the in the in the running um and as Jim indicated you know there were problems along the way you know the active 50 plan was just not in place river corridors for instance those folks hadn't been consulted we met with um I think three different um agencies at the state and they've taken the permitting as far as we can you know at this point so we don't have the permits in hand right but, but the 2.7 million obligates the partner who's doing this work to obtain the permits yes obtain act 250 yes yeah, and that was my oversight for not telling that. So, is, is there a motion to put the 2.7 on the uh, ballot for town meeting for March? That's what the finance committee had recommended to the board uh, from our Tuesday meeting before the new numbers. I made a motion to put it on so as an article. Is there a is second? It? Yeah, second it. Second it. Raise my hand. Yes, other um, other comments or questions? Jim? So, you know, Matt brings up a great point about the Act 250 when listening through this whole process for the last five years. You know, they did finally go through Act 250 and River and all that. It's not finalized. So um, if we're asking for $2.7 million, I'm hoping that 
it can take you a year or more in Act 250 in the state of Vermont on a project. And I don't know why we're saying 2.7 when well, we can just find out what the cost is for um, getting this. So what plan we have in front of us, the schematic drawing will fit on with, with the permits in place. Um, if you're not planning to go to a bond vote until 2024 on the whole building, yes, the design, the, the final design is part of capital, as Matt is saying. But I think we should be only looking at, and that's my issue. I think we're spending too much this one year of saying $2.7 million. We're doing a project in Kennington right now on this tip with the water system and all the roads. And it is a $75 million project also. Um, I've been leading it in the town of Kellington for a year and a quarter now. And I can tell you up to this point for, for our town to get actual numbers to go to a vote this March, okay, cost us $930,000 so far. But that's including hiring on to get through for a tax incremental financing program, that's engineers on water, that's engineers on the road, that's BHP. We're at $981,000, folks. I, I think 2.7 million, we're just going too high. I don't think you need that much at this time. Is there something specific you think could be taken out? Uh, I think I, I agree with what Matt had said is that we should be looking at, uh, we don't have a dollar amount matter eyes. What does it cost to get the Act 250 in place? We have a drawing of a building we like to build. We now we need to take that building and get to Act 250 and see if we can get that building fit on that property. So you're suggesting prioritizing the permitting first. Yeah, and I think that's what the map is saying. Well, I am saying that. And I think to this discussion, what degree of your designs do you need? I mean, we talk about engineering designs in my business of like 30% drawings, 50% drawings, something that you can hand over to a contractor to run a robust competitive RFP so you get multiple contractors bid on the construction work. And I'm just wondering, do, is the 2.7 million giving us more than we need in its scope to get good bids so that we can go to the bond voters with a real price. So, and I will, one more comment. The original cost estimate to build the school was not an RFP. It was, we did an RFP to hire the architect and the designers, and then they put together specs on what the building would look like. And then one firm, one construction management firm gave us a number, but we didn't get multiple firms to bid a, contra a contract. Sure. which is what we do want to do. I think we should do that before we go out and ask the taxpayers for money. We should we should have multiple bids come in. Okay. Uh, so the 70 or the 2.7 million is um, to meet the timeline of being able to break ground following town meeting in, in um, March 24. So as soon as we get the yes vote to be what do we need from the architects to be able to break ground, right? So that's what's driving that number. I mean, I, I suppose we could go back to the taxpayer again, if we want to have some lower number now at some time between, you know, uh, town meeting 23 and 24, if we want to pay the architect to finish the work that we need them to do to be able to break ground, that seems awkward. <clears throat> so that's that's where that number comes from. Um, I, I get it. I, I understand what you're saying that other projects, you've been able to go to the taxpayer at lower amounts. Um, I don't know what your timing is in relation to your vote and being able to go forward. We're going to break ground in June of 2023. <clears throat> Is there a way to move forward that would um, uh, reach the goal of getting permits without other additional things in that 2.7 number? Sorry, is there a so way? To... Is there a way to parse out, uh, parcel out what is in that two point seven number, so that we're looking specifically at the uh, point of concern, which is getting the permits before we do other big things that rely on the permits? Uh, yeah, we can get more detail on two point seven if you'd like between now and uh, say two weeks from now. Uh, 
or even to your point that we're paying 2.7 million so we can break ground the day after the bond vote. I, I don't think that's actually, is it really important that we break ground right after the bond vote? I mean, I would wanna, I'd rather reduce the amount that we have to borrow now just to get a good bond vote. And then if we have to buy time in the schedule, we, we will, but, um, you know, 2.7 of a $75 million project is a pretty significant number if your bond can get voted down, right? And get, could get voted down for years and years and years. And, and then that, the value of those drawings, all that sort of, uh, well, it, it loses value over time. Right, so the idea is to be able, it's an 18 month um, uh, construction uh, 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 schedule. And the idea is to be able to, you know, if you could keep to the schedule, open the new building so you can demolish the old building in time for the start of classes in September of 25. That's that's the idea of being able to break ground in you know May of 24. So is there a way to prioritize what you need to do and have a bond that is up to 2.7 that if you basically go through your permitting and all that and maybe shave some costs? Okay. Yeah, and maybe like you said, uh, you know, you don't want to have to go and have another bond halfway through the year, but you could go up to it. And as you find things are proceeding and the uh, the permits are fine and everything, they keep going. And at least you prioritize and do it stepwise rather than the ending two point seven million. Sure, but I don't know. I don't that. Okay. So sorry. I like us to relax Robert's rules. I think we're having a really good conversation. There are two people who have their yeah, hands no, up. But I, mean, after, I would like to recognize yeah. them. No, I'm saying I'm not going to talk now, but I think we should relax Robert's rules and let and go through the people on there. And, I think Bob should go first. Well. Yeah, Bob and then Todd. Yeah, I think yeah. the advantage yeah. of of putting the 2.7 million or up to 2.7 million of bond um before the voters is a good idea because the probability that they're going to approve that and then shoot down the bond for the school is in my mind just about nil so, so it's a good way to measure the temperature of the voters that's it thank you bob Don? sorry i'm still going um matt i agree that i don't think there's a reason it needs to be shovel ready the day after a vote bob i disagree with you on the temperature because things only get more expensive projects only cost more is there is there anybody who's interested in discussing some way to put the 75 million because matt upped it by 5 million 75 million out to voters and the reason i say this is that just speaking from a woodstock perspective um which i know is only a part of the union woodstock is looking at a bond for coming up in the next couple of years for critical infrastructure, a $30 million plus sewer bond will hit the voters. Um, the Woodstock Aqueduct Company, which is privately owned, has no more capacity for expanding business. So zero new businesses and developers can tie into the system. So these are massive capital intensive projects for our voters in Woodstock. And I worry that there'll be fatigue. So if we could say to someone, hey, $75 million, our school's 60 years old. We have great outcome with students. We're very fiscally responsible. We're going to build this within the next three years or whatever, two years, whatever it might be. And here's our time frame of targets will hit. Is there any appetite for anyone to sort of come up with something like that? Because also I'm in favor of whatever the amount of money that that the bill committee says they need, whether it's 2.7 or Jim saying something less, I'm totally in favor of it. But just know that that Bob Woodstock voters are already angry with their taxes, just like lots of people are. I know people in Killington are, lots of people are, but there's massive infrastructure problems that have to be dealt with in the next few years in this town. And I'm just afraid that they're gonna shoot it down. Let me let me just float a, a thought. You don't have to borrow the 2.7 million up front. You can do a either an incremental or a bond anticipation note for a short term. So you're not necessarily locked into that amount. Another thing, and this is a comment actually from our architect, um, that he says something about it taking close to a full year 
you do all the documents and the site permits and everything for the Act 250. And his comment is many districts choose not to invest in the CD documents until after um, the Act 250 permit is in place or after a bond vote. Um, so if if we authorize up to 2.7 and you can't put it in the article because the law is pretty specific on what goes in the article, but kind of give the direction as the board that we will do the Act 250 permitting. When that's in place, then we'll start the development of the plans. That may mean that we don't have construction ready plans like a March of 24, but it means we put our ducks in the right row. And I don't know what the Act 250 process will cost, but even if it's a half million dollars, if that's all it costs, it's a half million dollars, not 2.7. And if it doesn't go, then you don't spend the rest of the money. So it kind of listening to what Matt has said, what everybody else has said, it, it's the right sequence. And we just haven't quite talked about the sequence. It will cost you up to that 2.7 to get the public input, do all the community information we need to do the Act 250 and get construction ready documents though. Is there a way of talking to Lee Sherwood and finding out what the cost would be for the Act 250? Because I'm sticking with Matt all the I just think 2.7 million on, and then I'm listening to Todd talking about how the um, town of Woodstock, forget about bond votes coming forward. Let's all remember that um, Woodstock and many other towns are getting a reappraisal done, and you are going to see a 30 to 50% increase in your property taxes without any of this stuff. Um, it, it's, I've run the numbers, I've shown you, and it's, it, it's there. So I, I think by saying 2.7 million now, and if everyone here is saying, well, if they approve 2.7, why aren't they gonna approve 75 million later on? And uh, every year is different. And I, I, I think mm -hmm. you're just being led from a group that is pushing for the full, an outside group pushing for the 2.7 for work to be done that does not need to be done at this time. I'm gonna go to that time scale there. If you pass a vote for 2.7 million in March of 23, and you start doing your um, your Act 250 stuff, and you don't get approval until March of 2024 from Act 250, then you're gonna get into your DDs and stuff, and that's gonna take another six to eight months or whatever. And then what you're gonna have to be doing is, is there's gonna be certain equipment that you're not gonna be able to get in time. So um, I think this plan doesn't have right scope because there are going to be boilers and other things that may be a year out and you're not gonna be open by September of 25. That, that's, that, that's an architect's dream there. Aspirational, we call that. <laughs> Aspirational, thank you. How do you say that in Spanish? <laughs> Come on, the move this forward one way or the other. Jim, would you be up for amending your motion to prioritize the spend? Um, in accordance with what Jim had laid out with prioritizing Act 250 permitting ahead of uh, the, the rest of the architects work? I would like us to, I think if we took a vote on what is there, that it, it fails, and then we have the um, finance director and the new bill have a discussion between now and our next meeting of what actually would be and if it's a million dollars, and I'm thinking about a million dollars, I'd be all forward of saying up to a million dollars at the next vote. I don't want to say that without the actual folks that are going to tell you what the um, permits are going to cost. And that will give you so that if people vote for that, you can always come in then when you start seeing Act 250 really fine. You can come in in July, August, September for the for the rest of the plans if everything is fitting well. I just want this to be done right, that's all. I would love to see a new building here. 
It's your motion. I mean, what are you? Uh, I'll call the question because it's it's on. I'm not going to amend it because it, what you're asking me to do is like amending it to up to 2.7 million, and I I don't agree with that. Right. What is the motion? I'm not sure. Still authorized 2.7. Up uh, to 2.7 the way it's written. Right? Yeah. yeah. To to the voters, town meeting in March. Just so just so people understand here, usually I'm gone in two months. I make a motion. Even if I don't agree with it, everybody else is standing around. Someone has to make the motion. So just because I don't agree, I make the motions. Wait, so. is it up to two points? Yes. That's yeah. what and it, it would it be possible to go back to the the consultant architects and ask them for a refined proposal that only gives us the permits and the designs up to the point where we could send them out for bid? Um, would that scope? reduce the 2.7 million or, or is there something in that scope for 2.7 million that maybe is going beyond where we need to go before taking it to the bond maybe, maybe that is the scope that gets us to shovel ready right after the bond vote but i i do think that you're putting a good deal at risk maybe you don't need to maybe we can have them give us a number that just gets us the permits and the design to go out for bid. So then we can tell bond payers exactly what we think it will cost. And then if there's drawings and engineering that still needs to be done, that gets paid for out of a future bond. So would the architects come back to us in the next two, three weeks and slim that scope down? So yeah, I can ask if I draw, draw the line there instead of shovel ready, you ask them for shovel ready. So, so then, where you're going to have the bond, you're going to have the budget vote ready within a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. but the articles don't have to be ready until the first week of January or January 30th to do not receive. So, this is going to be an article for a bond vote, a bond article vote. We don't have to have this done until June, uh, January 30th. We're working so, on so it. So, sounds like we don't need to take a vote tonight. We can wait until the December 19th. So, with more information around some of the concerns that have been raised. And then if we're ready at December 19th to yeah. vote. Which we my like. Yeah. Sure, we should table this for a couple weeks. Okay. Instead of changing it. Yeah. But I think there's a lot of good stuff here, and I just want to make sure we get it right. Sure. So I'm going to make a, I'm going to motion to withdraw it. And who seconded it? I do. Yeah. I, you yeah. have to say yes or no. Yes. I second that. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank that, was, that was grueling. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to be the finance person on yeah, the chair. Yeah. Thank you. Really. All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we're ready for the policy committee update. Yep. There's two policies to discuss this evening. Uh, the first is um, a, an amendment to the prevention of harassment, hazing, and bullying policy that we had adopted uh, in 2018. Uh, the revision, the suggestion to revise it is uh, was brought up by a student who uh, has been the victim of religious uh, bigotry, um, anti-Semitism to be specific, that she's experienced here at the school. Um, and she noticed that our existing policy is not consistent in the use of the term religion um, in delineating, delineating the basis for harassment, hate, and bullying. Um, it's not been consistent because it uses it religion and creed is used in the beginning of the uh, first paragraph of the policy, but only creed uh, used subsequently. And she presented to us and um, basically uh, the idea that creed is, you know, really not synonymous with religion. There are some religions that have creeds or don't, and there are certainly creeds that may have nothing to do with religion. So she suggested that we actually add the word uh, religion to um, to our policy, so it says religion and creed in all instances. So there, on the policy, there's three uh, places that we have it, and we're um, we would like to put it there. The policy committee uh, voted on this. In addition, uh, separately, we wanted to add the language to further delineate um, gender identity and gender expression where it's mentioned there. So that's just an an aside since we're revising it. So. Um, 
I would like to just uh, present this as a friendly but a very important uh, amendment and ask for this to be moved to adopt rather than a first read. I'll make a motion to adopt at our next meeting because that's how it has to go at the next meeting. It can't be tonight. It, you can't just take no. the first reading and just adopt no. it? No. Raina? I'm, I'm pretty sure Robert's Rules and Order does not have anything about reading. Is I, Raina still on? Yeah, I'm right, yeah, I'm right here. Um, no, no, we have uh, to make a motion to, uh, to at the next meeting to do it? Correct, because you have to have a very specific legal time frame of warning for adoption. Okay. So I'm making okay. a motion to adopt at the next second. Anyone opposed? Thank you, Elliot. Okay, the next policy is actually, it's written under here as first reading. It's actually not, it's actually the second reading because it's a change in title on it. It's not a new, it's not a new policy. So th this is the formally discussed capital debt repayment policy, which we've discussed at our recent policy meeting and decided that we, we wanted to change the title so that uh, to, something and to make it more obvious what we were talking about. So call it the new bill tax impact reduction policy. Everything else is basically the same, is the same. Um, and that uh, we wanted to retitle this policy just to add clarity both to board members and to the community as what the purpose and scope of the policy. So my ask again is, um, Yes, it's moving to adopt. I mean, this is the second. This is the second read. I'm going to make a motion to go back to the uh, policy committee for a third reading. Uh, we had long discussion on this at our last full board meeting, and uh, there was multiple discussions of certain things, even from our former chair Bryce, that should have been looked at. And um, all I got back is the same exact policy, but we just changed the name. Um, this 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 policy is setting this board up for a future board up for drastic moves if you follow the rules in this document of what ifs. And it's what if not, the population doesn't increase. And what if not, the donations that are expected in years three, four, five, six, and whatever are not accepted. Your policy is basically saying that you will now have to make cuts from 35 or 36% down to 16%. And as a former finance chair, on the middle school, high school, and on this board, okay? 70 to 80% of your budget in future years is based on payroll and benefits. So if you can take a look at your budget today <clears throat> and find out that when you don't have the enrollment go up and you don't have the donations come in, you show me where you're going to find 15% cut from your current budget. Think about it. There is no need to have a policy for a bond vote that you tell the taxpayers straight up, this is what it's going to cost. And it can be lowered if we get these things in. You don't promise a 16%. I have never seen it. Never. Any other comments? Well, someone has the second line, third, whatever, but if nobody does, then somebody else can make a motion. But I'll yeah. make a motion to adopt. Is there a second? Yeah, a second. Ben? Yeah, I guess I'll uh, address Jim's comments. I'm, I'm afraid that, you know, getting into a nightmare scenario where we weren't able to have successful fundraising and we aren't able to, um, you know, drive enrollment, but this is a mandate that the board is establishing with this policy to fundraise. Other um, independent schools in Vermont do it very actively and very successfully. We have a lot of wealthy people in our communities. We've seen a lot of success already. 
and have a very healthy list of donors who um, I think can get behind this project, have a reason for optimism to be able to drive enrollment as other schools have done. <clears throat> it's a mandate from the board is what this policy is. And I think it's a direction that we need to go as a district. Everybody else is gonna keep quiet, I'm sure. Um, being here from day one of the new build starting back around seven years ago in that year, I think we have approved at least four times already for the new build to go out and seek funding from grants and um, donors. Um, it hasn't happened. Uh, we, we've gotten maybe two or three million dollars over six or seven years. If you take a look at the actual document of the new bill from the group that is putting together the fundraising. Number one, it states there's 1,100 students in school. We don't have 1,100. We have 1,013 at this time. So it's gonna take you at least eight years to get 10 more. You're looking at a declining enrollment for the last couple of years, okay? You don't need a policy. What you need is, going back to Todd, is you need a vote for the building. Do not promise voters or give them smoke and mirrors that you're going to. This is, this is a fantasy that if we get more students, if we get funding, your tax rate will only be 16% increase. You know, it's 35% increase. Burlington, when they did their vote, Ben, they came out with 15% and they state right in their article that it will be 15% increase, but it may be lowered or completely lowered with the new change. But they were still up front with their voters and said, you are voting for a 15% increase. But we think with the actual recalculations of per pupil, it will get completely wiped out. They were truthful to their voters. If this board wants to sit here and put smoke and mirrors up that, and it fails, you've killed this whole district because when you start going out to your teachers. All right, thank you, Jim. I think that we have opposing viewpoints on this and you know we've heard yours very clearly at this point, Anna. Yeah, I just wanna say, I think this has been really good work on a number of different approaches. It really has shown you know, that this board is taking this seriously, that there is a cap to the tax increase. Um, if, you know, if you feel like maybe we need to add in some verbiage that says in future years, it will decrease as we are able to decrease it. Um, but I think it shows great uh, collaborative across committee work. Um, and it really, from my perspective, really shows the taxpayer dollars that we are putting the effort into, um, solidifying our work together and also the fact that we want to move forward with their uh, perspective in mind. And I do, I would like to say that I think that fundraising in general um, came to a standstill during the, the two and a half years of the pandemic. So anybody who was thinking about anything was concerned about their health, their community, and they weren't thinking about giving money to a school. So I think that it's truthful to say that all the efforts that had been going along were brought to a stall just like the whole country was. And I think, you know, Ben's indicated that there's been some renewed interest and a probable donation that's sizable that's due in at some point soon. I'll add a little bit to the discussion. I, when I first read the policy, it was confusing to me as to um, whether or not it would be binding upon us, whether or not um, this was subsequent to taking the initial money we raised and reducing the bond and then further reducing bond payments. But as I looked at the financial model to calculate the 16%, um, the 16% is, is almost like um, pegging a commitment by our board to raise a certain amount of private money um, because you can run that model 
and solve for how much private money we have to raise and then use to pay off the debt over the next five years. And I think Jim's point is that other things can change because you had to forecast our education spending every year. And you, I think you used a 5% number. Is that right? Three. And three five, okay. Five, three. And then you had to forecast the number of students. And you did it in a way that was, I think, in good faith, like looking back at what it's been in the past and where it could be. Um, it wasn't extreme scenarios. You didn't run sensitivities of like, what if, you know, spending goes up this much and kids drop off this much. It was more just, I think, honest sort of projections. And then you showed how much money we have to raise to keep it at 16%. And over time, when the, when the education spending is increasing, the bond payment is staying flat and it's sort of easier to hit that 16%. And then I understand that the whole intent of this is that we have a, there's a feeling among some that the bond at the current amount would fail um, if it were a 30 plus percent increase in people's tax rates due to education. And that this is an attempt to, to do something to help get that bond to pass. And I guess I go back to the finance committee and Ben, you worked a lot on this. Um, what, what was the sort of commitment in the model that we needed from private money to hit the 16%? I mean, someone just told me, I, I missed it from last meeting. We've already got a $5 million commitment total. Uh, well, I'm, I'm reluctant to, we've got some things in the works, but I think and uh, the, the numbers that we showed at uh, the last board meeting, I think we were uh, just under 2 million. Okay. And, and we've got a year to go. We've got, um, there's some, some things that we'll hopefully be able to announce and here. To, and to keep the 16% in your base case projections, what was the total private funding that we brought? Yeah, so if you had, you were just doing it through um, through fundraising and not through enrollment, the numbers that we used at the last board meeting were $5 million um, by the March 24 bond vote as a milestone. And that's to be able to put money into the first two years of the bond to keep it at 16%. And then over the next five years, the seven year mark, to be able to get up to uh, $12 million. So you're looking at, you know, roughly you know, uh, a million to two million bucks a year um, after that, um, you know, actually going forward from here. Um, Raina? Oh, Sorry about that. I was muted. I just want to clarify with Ben. Ben made a motion to adopt, but your agenda has to warn to the public that you're going to adopt a policy in advance. And this agenda doesn't warn it. It doesn't tell the public that you're adopting any policy. So you have to warn to adopt at the next meeting. You can't adopt. Well, a my motion should stay at the third reading anyway, but hopefully you're. But, but, but this was incorrect that it's not a first reading. I mean, we didn't well, make a motion at the last meeting to adopt it this year. Right. We made a and, motion. And I understand that. that uh, yeah, I understand I'll, that I'll it's technically a second reading, but. Okay. I mean, it, I mean I'm not trying to um, skirt the rules, so I'll make I'll make my motion to be effective at the next meeting. And I'll continue to second. All right, Bob. Uh, I, th I think this policy is extremely well written and it, it, it speaks huge amounts about the seriousness of the people who have spent so much time working on this. And I think it'll, it'll set a good example to the public if and when they want to read this. But I think it should, be, it, it should be passed without question at the next meeting. Thank you. I think we just call the question since it's going to come back for a vote at the start. Yeah. Um, all those who are opposed to uh, adopting at the next meeting, please say so. Everybody has to say aye. Yeah, well, I don't want to make everybody unmute and then have to count it. <laughs> so, all right, thank you. Uh, it will be uh, born to be adopted at the next meeting. Now, would that, is that December 19th or is that the January meeting? January. January meeting, okay. All right, thank you, Elliot. Um, buildings and Grounds Committee update. Buildings and Grounds has not been meeting. 
Um, we're in the middle of building stuff up. Um, you know, we we were set out with a budget and uh, we pretty much have everything spent and then some. Yeah, I think Jim Fenn hit it uh, earlier. But we're moving forward on the, the RFPs for the roof at Killington. The only other two things I'd like to add quickly is um, we hope to have the public portals for our solar systems up by the end of the month. Students and public will be able to access those. And uh, early in 2003, uh, 2023, we'll be starting uh, PCB testing at uh, Woodstock Elementary. Those are so, the things I'd add. So, as, as, as the building and chair, uh, building the grounds chair that is leaving, um, I just want to say it's been a lot of fun with the group. Okay. Um, respect Joe a lot and Jim Ben. You know, there, there, there are some frustrations because. You know, we we're sitting here today looking at a 1.2 million for a heating system for the middle school high school and 1.75 for a roof at Killington. And buildings and grounds, the whole group, um, Terry, Bob, Matt, myself, okay, worked with the ACI and we had a full plan that covered $10 million worth of work. And in that $10 million was the roof, was the um, heating system, which was actually a heating system that would have been wood and um, propane that could have got switched over to the new build because we were designing it that way, which would have taken money out of the new build cost. It included solar panels in this whole parking lot that would have taken up pretty much the whole electric or whatever. And it was only going to cost, I think the highest price is $400,000 a year. We were looking for 750,000 to be continued in our budget and it would be taken from there. We were cut back to just do the elementary schools and a few little items in the middle school, high school, that's about 83 or 87,000. So for $300,000 more, we, we were gonna move this really far. And I just like to say thank you to all the people in buildings and grounds for you know, working on it. We're not gonna really meet because we found out that we only have about $350,000 in this current year's budget when I was led to believe 750 all along. And I think we're well above that already, but that's what we are. That's where we, we, we're, we're taking care of projects. <laughs> well, certainly, Jim, you've done the bulk of the work. So you, you, you should be applauded for the many efforts you put in, time, meetings, back and forth that you came in on and then told the rest of us <laughs> what, what, what you've learned. <laughs> and I think Matt was a, a, a big help to you as well. Bob and I were, well, Bob, I won't speak Bob to you. Bob was big. You were big. I took the Karen. minutes. Uh, you were big. <laughs> Thank you. Just thank you all. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Adam, do Thanks, you Joe. want to do your update in during the executive session, or do you have something for us now uh, as well? Uh, I'll, 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 in executive session, I'll, I'll give our update about negotiations, but um, also just use this opportunity is, is my intention is as soon as we are to finish with negotiations with um education support staff is that i'll be stepping down from the negotiations committee um i don't know if bryce will continue but as a board we'll need um someone to step into that role and um and help facilitate the next round of negotiations with teachers which will be coming up okay thank you all right um we have a working group update from the configuration and enrollment growth working group Oh, and, and Aiden are going to make a presentation about the name of the district. Yes. So I have a Google slide here. I don't know if I'm able to present that, but I had a, a bad idea that might work where I could like show you my iPad or something. But <laughs> we, can make you, we can make you co-host, Owen. Hang on for a second. You've got a I great think, presentation and you should share it. Brandon, I feel not like deserving Owen? the, the co-host. Let's see. Yep, he's all okay, I'm the co-host now. Great. Here we go. Here we go. You have the power, Owen. Use it well. Awesome. Okay. Can we see this? This is good. You're good. It's good. Okay. I think Aiden's gonna kick us off here. 
All right. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right. So, um, so I remember last board meeting, we uh, brought this idea up of um, renaming the district. And um, I'll go over the kind of just a review of the steps we did in that meeting. But um, this presentation is to just kind of give a summary of what we've done in the past month and uh, kind of where we are now with our, uh, the district renaming proposal and uh, some next steps that we are planning to take. So, I don't know if you want to go to the next slide. All right. So, um, here's some steps we took prior to uh, was that um, the meeting we had back in um, November. So, November seventh. Um, so, we have been. Um, I think this originally started uh, last year, but we were had several names were crowdsourced from the schools in our district and um, some community areas as well. So it mainly included West, KES, TPVS, I believe Barnard as well, Prosper Valley School and WHSMS. Um, and we all got a bunch of ideas uh, for names for possible new names for our district. And our main goal was to change our name from this generic idea of just the Windsor Central Supervisory Union. There's some concerns about identity and this representation to our district with that name. And we were planning on to <coughs> try to find a more inclusive, more meaningful name for our district. So once we um, got all these uh, names from these uh, locations, we had a meeting as a committee on November 3rd to synthesize these suggestions and these names into the top three uh, names that we believe are the best candidates for the possible new uh, district name. Um, we proposed these, Owen and I proposed these names on our November 7th board meeting, uh, those being Riverbank School District, Mountain View School District, and Calvin Coolidge School District, to just kind of get some ideas flown with uh, the board, and to also just to kind of get some general feedback to see kind of what steps we need to take. Uh, and then we finished off by confirming um, giving us like another month to just kind of uh, work with the information we have uh, to confirm our final decision today. So um, since we last spoke to this group on the 7th, we basically took the then three names and we sent those out as a group to the public for some uh, community feedback. And then we had a meeting on the 30th where we evaluated that feedback, um, which was significant. There was a lot of it. Um, and then we kind of, we distilled and deliberated um, those ideas from, uh, from the feedback. And we kind of cut out two of the names for whatever reason, whether it be controversy or just blandness or plain confusion um, that was voiced by the public. And then um, after kind of talking about old names and, and reconsidering and, and chatting for a bit, we came up with our final district name uh, to present today. Drum roll, please. Aiden, you're going to say the name. Give me the cue. All right. So the uh, Configuration and Enrollment Working Group has worked hard to synthesize these names. And our final name choice for the district renaming proposal is Mountain View School District. Nice. Nice. All right. I wonder if you want to go on to the next slide. Cool. So then, you know, Mountain View School District, why? Right. So here's our benefits. Um, this originated from from Killington Elementary School. Their process there, as Aiden discussed, we kind of um, surveyed all of our schools and they all had their own different methods for finding um, names. But I think in Killington, they had their student council interview different students and then they voted on it, and this was one of the top three names um, from Killington. We feel that it's a pretty politically and socially neutral name, which um, was certainly something we had considered going into this uh, whole shebang, but we I don't think we really anticipated how uh, much that would be expressed by the public feedback. That was a major concern, um, especially with some of our other name options. Um, also, you know, on a on a baseline level, it's it's a unique name and it's it's pretty unlike any other names of school districts in the state. It's inclusive of, of all of our towns in our district. If anything, uh, 
you know, unites us maybe even more so than maple syrup or something. It's, uh, it's probably mountains, right? We've got uh, dozens of them from, from the peak of Killington to the smallest hills, right? Um, and so it is, it is accurate and, and pretty representative of our topography in that sense. Um, and this was just a cool quote that we thought uh, put it more eloquently than we ever could. This was from an anonymous uh, member of our school district community. And they said, I'll read it to you quickly. So many of our schools head to the mountains for location-based learning and, and important milestones. Graduates of Prosper Valley walk to the middle school at the end of the year. West kids take field trips to Mount Peg. Barnard kids strap on their snowshoes and head out into the snow, while elementary school kids learn to ski together at Saskadena 6. Killington kids, well, they live on a mountain. So um, <laughs> I thought that was pretty well put. Um, and, you know, we'd like to to send that out to you, see uh, your thoughts, pick your minds about, about what we've gathered thus far. I'll go ahead and make the motion uh, based on uh, the incredible work that our students have done coming up with uh, uh, ideas and uh, narrowing them down in addition to our public's input and our community and uh, CEWG configuration enrollment work group. Um, that uh, the so my motion is to accept the new name of Mount Peg. Like telling to represent it on the board on the second. To accept the 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 recommended name of Mountain View School District for our new district name. Second. I do have a question. I like it a lot, and but I do have a question: Is there any plan to have a logo or a, a logo of the of the letters or a logo of the letters and and again, that might be something we move to our students again. And the intention would be any change would not occur till July 1st, 2023. Mountains in your M and your B. There's lots of options. There's options for other things too that have been reversed to that. But the, the change would not occur, Jim, then maybe from us and well, but it would not happen until July 1st of 2023 because lots of things will need to shift. Any other board member comments? This was my favorite out of all of them. So I'm so I'm happy. Adam has a I would just Adam? I would just add uh, congratulations to Owen and Aiden. This it's been really impressive to uh, watch the two of you kind of spearhead this, and uh, the way you present is really impressive. And thanks for your work. Great. All right, uh, Ray. Ray Rice. I uh, just like to say thank you for all your hard work, and it sounds great to me. Uh, we love the mountains, so it's fabulous. Thank you. Way to go. <laughs> thank you, Ray. Anybody else? All right, then um, I will call the vote. If anyone is opposed, please say so. But it group for miles, kids were not to school in Mountain View. <laughs> All right, then uh, the vote passes unanimously to accept the district name change as the Mountain Views School District. And I want to give some credit to Sherry who connected um, our working group early on with a tuck school group that um, helped us through a process of looking at how to make meaningful change, how to do it with the least um, harm to, <laughs> to people and to be inclusive of all um, stakeholders. And that process, um, I think, was tested out here for the district. And it will probably be further tested as the students would like to embark upon some other changes, um, especially to align with our new uh, VSBA policy on mascots. And thank you and for the work you've done to organize, collect information, respond to every single listserv yes. email that was oh, sent your way. Great hate mail. Oh, wow. else what what's, what's, thank you for? what's next? The mascot? We're going to the Yetis? What are we? <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> Jim McLaughlin suggested the Whippets. That don't want to bring back with that. I think he's kidding. I'm not watching. Well, what it's All right. Um, then we are now at 
The executive second. Oh, no, I'm going to make a motion for the consent agenda approval. Consent agenda approval. Second. And I'd just like to say, can we have something on the new hire? At least congratulate before we say yeah. Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, I interviewed Claire. I'm very excited. She's uh, really excited to come into this position, lives in Stockbridge, has a background in the commercial uh, uh, arts, worked as an apprentice for um, Simon Pierce for years. Very enthusiastic start. I think she's going to be a great addition for their teams and loves to travel between schools. So we like that. Yes, and also I, I know it's not in the consent agenda, but it's because it's informally and internal. I'm very um, excited to hear that Kate Kardashian is moving over to the community classroom. Mm -hmm. I watched her work that summer program in middle school, and she was fantastic. Yeah, no, it's very exciting. So, very good. Are we ready to vote on the consent agenda? Jim's made a motion. Was it seconded? Mm -hmm. All right. All in favor. All anyone opposed? So what are we going to the executive session for? It. Uh, yeah. Employment matter. Employment matter at 842. You're moving us into it. Yes. Okay. We need a second. 